Hey guys, this is Craig Miglaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the 22-step refrigeration cycle of a heat pump in cooling mode. For more information on the refrigeration cycle and refrigerant handling, check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. We have that link down in the description section below. Over on the right-hand side of the picture, you see we have an air handler, and it's sucking the air across the indoor coil. So in this cooling mode, that indoor coil is going to be referred to as the evaporator coil. And over on the left-hand side of the picture, on the left-hand side of the exterior wall, you have an outdoor unit. So this could be referred to as a heat pump or an outdoor unit. And the coil in this during cooling mode is considered the condenser coil. Up top, you see the refrigerant state. So there's a color guide so you can follow along with what state the refrigerant's at during the refrigeration cycle. If you see two colors inside of a tube, then that means the refrigerant is in the saturated state in that part of the refrigeration cycle. So at step number one, you have the low pressure, low temperature, superheated vapor entering the vapor compressor. Then at step number two, the high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor exits the compressor. So for the refrigerant, anytime that the pressure increases, temperature increases. Likewise, anytime temperature increases, pressure increases. So what's happening is the compressor is increasing the vapor pressure in order to increase its temperature. Then in step three, you have the high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor traveling through the discharge line toward the reversing valve. Step four is the high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor travels through the reversing valve toward the condenser. Step five is the high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor enters the condenser where it de-superheats and rejects heat to the outside air and lowers in temperature. Number six is the high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor continues to reject heat while also lowering in temperature. When the vapor lowers in temperature, that's referred to as de-superheating. It's gonna do that until it turns into the saturated state. Once the refrigerant's in the saturated state, it's going to reject heat, but it's no longer going to lower in temperature. So in step seven, the refrigerant is just going to continue rejecting heat, but not lower in temperature. In step eight, the saturated refrigerant rejects enough heat energy to turn completely into a liquid. This liquid then starts to lower in temperature. This lowering in temperature in the liquid form is called the subcooling. In step nine, the liquid continues to reject heat and lower in temperature as it travels through the condenser. The refrigerant is in the process of subcooling. In step 10, the high pressure, high temperature subcooled liquid bypasses through and around the inactive metering device and remains unchanged. The liquid refrigerant continues to reject heat and lower in temperature until it comes out of the outdoor unit at step 11. Step 11 is where you can read the high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant pressure. So there's typically an access port on the side of the liquid line service valve. The temperature decrease of the liquid refrigerant between step 8 and step 11 is called the subcooling. In step 12, you have the subcooled liquid entering into the filter dryer and the filter dryer's job is to trap any debris and water. The filter dryer has a limited capacity due to its size in order to absorb water. And the refrigerant remains in the subcooled liquid state. After the refrigerant exits the filter dryer in step 12, the high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant enters the metering device at step 13. At step 14, the liquid exits the metering device as a low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant. But this liquid refrigerant rapidly expands into a mixture of 80% liquid, 20% vapor, due to the lack of pressure and also the availability of space. The refrigerant then absorbs heat in the evaporator. In step 15, you have the refrigerant in the saturated state where both liquid and vapor exist at the same time. The refrigerant continues to absorb heat from the evaporator, but does not change in temperature. In step 16, you have the refrigerant absorbing enough heat energy in the saturated state to turn into a complete vapor. Once the refrigerant turns into a complete vapor, it continues to absorb heat, but now increases in temperature now that it's out of the saturated state. Any increase in temperature in the vapor state is called the superheat. So now in step 17, you have the low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant continuing to absorb heat and increasing in temperature. The refrigerant at this point is in the process of superheating. In step 18, you have the low pressure, low temperature superheated vapor exiting the evaporator coil and the amount of temperature increase between where the refrigerant comes out of the saturated state in step 16 and where it exits the evaporator coil at step 18 is called the superheat. The low pressure, low temperature superheated vapor travels over to the vapor service valve at step 19. This is where you can read the low pressure, low temperature vapor pressure. This is also where you can check the total superheat of the system. The temperature increase of the vapor refrigerant between step 16 and step 19 is referred to as a total superheat. In step 20, you have the low pressure, low temperature superheated vapor traveling through the reversing valve and into the accumulator tank. In step 21, you have the low pressure, low temperature superheated vapor traveling through the accumulator, and the accumulator's job is to protect the compressor by preventing any unwanted liquid from entering the compressor inlet. 
At the bottom of the accumulator tank, there's an oil return metering device. And this metering device allows the oil that's gathered in the bottom of the accumulator tank along with the liquid refrigerant that's in the bottom of the accumulator tank to go through the metering device and enter back into the vapor line. Any liquid refrigerant that enters into that metering device quickly gets flashed into a saturated state and ends up turning into a vapor before entering into the compressor. Typically in air conditioning mode, you're not going to have much liquid in that accumulator tank, but in heating mode, you may actually have some liquid refrigerant in that tank. In step 22, you have the superheated, low pressure, low temperature vapor entering back into the compressor again, and the cycle starts all over at step one. If you want to learn more about the refrigeration cycle and refrigerant charging and service procedures, check out our new book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning Book. The link to the website is down in the description section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.